So good afternoon, everyone. Um, and good afternoon to Mr. Matt Richardson from the Furious Driving YouTube channel. Good afternoon. Hello. Hopefully you can hear us loud and clear. Um, this is the first time we've tried doing things on Zoom, although Mr. Richardson himself is a very experienced person when it, uh, when it comes oh. to these. I've zoomed three times. It's amazing. I know. I know. So uh, yeah, hopefully this will, this will work. Um, we will be taking a break probably halfway through because we both have three Zoom accounts. And as all the world knows, you uh, can only get 40 minutes at a time with a free Zoom account. So we'll probably be taking a break halfway through and I should be inserting something interesting into the video for the viewers to see. Uh -huh. um, hopefully as well, you'll be seeing little pictures of the cars that we're going to be talking about in the video. Um, if I can get the editing correct, if I can't, then that's just the way that things go. So um, Use your imagination. <laughs> imagination. Back at last summer, uh, my friend Andy Shaw and I recorded a video called The Cars of the Avengers Part 1, where we talked about um, the Avengers TV series a little bit. We talked about the main cars used in those, so things like the Lotus Elan, the mm. various Bentleys mm -hmm. and Rolls Royces, and um, the lovely AC428. Um, but there's an awful lot more to talk about in the Avengers than just the main cars and six Bentleys. The series ran for such a long time and for so many episodes that even if we talked about this for three or four hours, we would never cover all the cars used in the series. And uh, actually in the, in the year or so, the first time we tried to record this, we tried to record this initially back in July 2019 when we were in a garden centre car park in Surrey and that actually failed. So... Um, it's been a long thing like crazy. That was a really, really hot day as well. So I know it was really ridiculous. Death in the car. And we didn't <laughs> actually record. We didn't actually record it at the end because the sound failed entirely. Oh, well, that's right. It was my old Fuji, and the adapter thing into it was really funny. So uh, yeah, that camera's no longer being used for videos. Yeah, yeah. So um, this is our second attempt at doing this. It's about a year since um, Andy and mm. I recorded um, part one. But we're now we're now definitely definitely there, and we're going to talk about some of these cars used in the Avengers. Um, the, the Avengers starred um, in the sort of most popular period, uh, Patrick McNee and Diana Rigg, and then later the last series was with Linda Thorson, um, and then Patrick mm -hmm. Newell played a character called Mother, which is really weird. I'm not going to go into that too much, other than to talk about one of the cars that Mother uses as mobile headquarters. It's actually not a car; it's something else, but. We'll get into that a little bit later. So um, in an episode called Epic, which is a massive fan favourite, that's from one of the Dino Riggs series, um, Peter Wingard, who I'm sure um, Ms. Richardson has heard, has heard of. Do um, you, you know Jason King, Mr. Richardson? Mm, absolutely, yes. yeah. With his, uh, he drove a, a Jensen, didn't he? No, it's a Bentley S2. Um, Jason, in, King, I thought Jason King drove a, drove a rather extravagant Jensen. No, it's a Bentley uh, S2... Um, sports Saloon by James Young. Oh, okay, well. <laughs> well, well it, it's, it's on the cars of Department S. We've already covered that. But oh, okay, in, yeah, yeah. In an epic, Peter Wingard's the sort of guest star, and uh, he drives mm. Dino Rig, having abducted her by using gas, because this is the Avengers. People get gassed all the time. Um, it's so a daily routine problem, I guess. Yeah. Daily routine. So he drives her around, um, around the Borenwood area um, into Austria Studios in an Austin FX3 taxi. Have you ever driven one of those, sir? I haven't. I think I've been on one on a photo shoot before. I've been sat in one. They they look like something. Well, how old are they? they? They take from the 40s, don't they? Or the yeah. early 50s? This one's VGF 345. It's also used in an mm. episode called A Girl from Auntie. That's a, a black and white episode. But this is a 58. Mm. So it's very, very, uh, a very, very late one. They went to they went to the um, the FX4 quite soon after, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. That's which didn't really change, and that's kind of what we know as a taxi now really isn't it yeah i don't think modern people would recognize an fx3 as a taxi if they saw one in the street yeah yeah i think they made the fx4 to what 97 yeah it was only when i think emissions finally killed them because they're using old land rover and isuzu engines that just wouldn't get through any more uh, stringent uh, emissions controls yeah 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 i mean we're, 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 there are fx4s in the avengers we won't probably talk about them because they're, they're everywhere in all the series right way through to like the 2000s but yeah the latter ones i think was a nissan mm -hmm. 2.7 diesel, but yeah, the FX3, um, that, that's the main car used in a series called Strange Report. It's a different one, but they were all mm. sort of everywhere. They were around, and Peter Wingard dressed up in his costumes and everything. He was a bit of a flamboyant personal Peter Wingard. 
Oh, yeah. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, the next car we'll, t- we'll talk about, which is actually not a car, it's a, it's a truck, uh, it's a milk float, an Austin mm. J2 milk float from an episode called False Witness. Um, do you know what the Austin J2 was, sir? Yeah, I've been in a police one, a, a really? very rare surviving actual police J2, but I've not been in a milk float version. No, no, I mean, um, I, this, this one, I think it's KWC 739. Um, the plot of the episode of False Witness is that the milk from the dairy is laced with a drug. And it's an anti-truth drug, so you can't tell the truth. You have to you, only you lie. lie. Yes, I know. So that's um, yeah. you see them all. Over. I think there's a couple of them, but yeah. Um, so does someone say, "Wow, that the legroom and ergonomics to this J2 are wonderful." Yes, I know. That's, exa- that's exactly the plot. You've got it. You got it in one. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, it, it kind of gets a bit stupid after a while because that's basically yeah. what everybody does. Um, <laughs> how was your J2 experience in the police van? It, it, it was uh, very comfortable indeed. No, wait, I've just drunk some milk. It was very uncomfortable indeed. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I can't, I can't say I've, I've seen one of those in, the, in, in a while. But there's a Morris version, I they're think. They're incredibly rare. Wasn't there? <clears throat> yeah. They're very um, rare indeed now. They, they are, yeah. A lot, of these, a lot of these cars we're talking about like, are just completely extinct, aren't they, pretty much? Yeah, they, there's just none left. Or yeah. one, ones and twos of them. Yeah, yeah. So ne- next time we go on to the Mini Moke. Uh, um, this is from an episode called... A surfeit of H2O, which is about somebody's plot to change the weather um, mm-hmm. and create lots of rain. That's basically all we need to know. Um, how, how would anyone tell? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, also, that was the plot of the 1998 Avengers film with Sean Connery, which, of course, we can't talk about on this channel, can we? There's a diesel in it. <laughs> well, well it, it, there might have been some diesel, but that film was terrible, so we, we can't. Well, there is that as well. Yeah. We can't talk about that, can we? Um, have you ever driven a mini moke, sir? I have, yeah, really good fun, ridiculously scary to be in. I mean, on on a par with being probably in um in an Austin Seven in terms of terrifyingness on the road, because it feels like you're just ro- sitting on a floorboard with no protection whatsoever and an engine in front of you, uh, bouncing along the road while all the the canvas parts just flap like crazy, and it sounds like you're in a on a small yacht or a small boat that's about to be capsized by a gale. Um, they're lots of fun, yeah. They're huge fun, but <laughs> an insanely dangerous idea. Yeah, I mean, I mean, when we get into um, uh, the uh, sort of cars, the prisoner episode that I've that, that I've done um, that talks about mini mokes more, and there's a, there's quite a few of them, and very used for popping in mm. and out on the beach. Um, I don't know why they chose that particularly, why she couldn't drive the Alan, but there we go. We, I think that was a BMC supplied car, so it's got a fleet registration. Uh, BOX 656C. That probably, uh, I don't know, rusted away many, many years ago, though. Um, More than likely. There's no rust protection on them at all. No, absolutely not. The, the latter years, uh, firstly Australia and then Portugal, whether they were made from, from memory. Um, so about yeah, the one I drove Portuguese. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. The one I, drove was, I think it was an 80s or 90s one I drove. Yeah, came from yeah. Portugal. It's a bit like a 2CV. That kind of ended in Portugal as well, didn't it? That, that ended up in Portugal. Yeah, it did, yeah, yeah. Lack safety controls. And exactly the same, wasn't it? What they, what they, yeah, no, no, um, yeah, no rust, no from, from the salt. They're like a, a convertible for the holiday rental market. So, uh, yeah, the, most of them went up as rental cars for, for tourists in the 90s. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, then, and then we've got, um, in the episode of the Birds, you knew too much, which is absolutely crazy. Avengers about a talking parrot who has to memorize missile codes. Um, <laughs> but it's classic Avengers. Um, there is a rather plain looking Austin 1800 um, mm-hmm. 66 model. I think it's JYT 518D. Have you ever driven mm-hmm. one of those Van Crabs, sir? I've been in a few Van Crabs, yeah. I've, I've known a few people who've owned some. I'm looking at the, the, uh, the list and looking at the picture on the screen to get, get a full visualization. Um, yeah, yeah, I really like the Van Crabs. They're very comfortable indeed. They're a, a nice car to be in. Uh, the 1800 is is a good engine out of the MG, isn't it? So um, yeah, out of the MGB, yeah, yeah. So they they go pretty well. And well, if imagine how well a mini drives, imagine that being a full size car. They're they're really quite nice. Um, they're not the prettiest thing in the world. No, they're, they're not ugly either. They're just kind of there in terms of styling. But um, it's just like oh, 16 feet of car. Um, but they they do handle really well for the size of them, and they they they're quite good off the line. They're they're good fun cars. I like those. Again, yeah, I don't so, really see it very many anymore. No, not at all. I mean, that was basically going this way, wasn't it? You just mm. kind of, um, you make a car that is engineering first and then the style doesn't really matter so much. 
Yeah, it, but with the Mini, it just kind of worked. It, the, the styling just happened, and it happened to work really well and became an icon, whereas the, the Land Crab, it looked okay, but it just wasn't, wow, that car's beautiful, we must go and own one. It was just ever so slightly awkward in certain ways from certain angles, so it never really became the icon it could have been. No, no, I mean, we'll talk about a Land Crab derivative a little bit later, because uh, mm. the, that, this Land Crab derivative that you, ha that you actually featured on your channel appears a yeah. couple of times in the series, but we'll get to that later. Um, in the Curious Case of Accountless Clues, uh, which uh, um, guest stars Peter Jones, um, mm -hmm. as a chap from Hedgehog's Guide to the Galaxy, the book, he, he, uh, he actually wears a deerstalker hat and looks like Sherlock Holmes, which is stupid. <laughs> um, but the villains, um, um, Kenneth Cope and Anthony yeah. Bates, um, they drive around in a 1964 Citroen DS19 Safari. Have you ever driven one of those? Sir? I've been in a couple of Citroen DSs over the years. I've only sat in a Safari in a car park. I've never driven in a Safari, but the DSs are just wonderful things to be in. They're so floaty and soft and you know, not very fast because that um, two litre engine was never really up to the job of pulling a car that big. I mean, the, the Rover 2000 was a big uh, rival for it, but the Rover seemed to have a bit more grunt out of the same size of engine. And that's my only real criticism of them is that they're a bit underpowered, but the ride is fantastic. The concept is just so out of this world. It's a car I'd love to own, to be honest, especially Safari form. Yeah, I, mean, I, th I think I think because this is pre sixty five. This one, it's a sixty four uh, AYR one four one B. Although mm. there's a bit of debate about this particular car because it appears in an early episode called Murdersville, um, mm. but it's got a different coloured roof, and so people think mm. it's two different cars. But I don't know. I think they <laughs> maybe. Thing. They may have just literally painted the roof of the car in between the two. Just like to a disguise it a little bit. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's not, I, I don't think it's a slough car. Oh, you can't. Oh, we're still there. I may have lost you. Oh, I can hear you, sir. Oh. I think I've lost you, Joseph. You've frozen. Uh, I can, can still you... hear you, sir. Okay, uh, you, you froze for, for a moment then. Yes, yes, that's the joys of, of the hazards of. Um... The Yes, the hazards of in, <laughs> internet conversations. It, it is. Um, oh, so, you've yeah. frozen some more. Well, well, is it is it still there? Right, so we start from the um, Daimler. Yes, yes. I'm afraid we we kind of got uh, we got into trouble talking about Citroen DS19 Safaris. Um, obviously, the Citroen mm -hmm. fan club was uh, listening to my rambling, and yeah. um, they cut us off. So they, they were alerted. They, they were. In. <laughs> yes, we'll go on to the 1964 Daimler limousine used in um, an episode called Death's Door. Um, that I think is also known as a DR250. Oh, sorry, DR450. I should get uh, my facts right here. DR450, I believe. Have you ever driven uh, one of those, sir? I no, I don't think I've even been in one of those. Um, I've not been in many limousines, not the old British variety. Um, oh, okay. No, they're very attractive looking cars, very Lanchester almost looking like, aren't they? But um, yeah, I don't really know a lot about the old 450. 
I think this is a, this is a pre-Jaguar design. Obviously, Jaguar took over in 1960, mm. and Manchester, I think, died. Yeah, looked at about the same the same time um, as uh, the BSA mm. owned Daimler and Lanchester in the 50s, and they had some shared sort of heritage. But yeah. by um, by this time, I think it was it was over. And then the, the, the DS420 came out in 68, and that lasted forever, didn't it? Absolutely forever, mm. ever and ever and ever. Uh, yeah. Yeah, they didn't bother changing anything at all on that. No, <laughs> no. no. Um, then the next car no. we're going to look at, a, a 1939 Ford V8 30 horsepower, otherwise known as um, probably the V8 Pilot, oh. very similar to that, um, dri driven by Stratford yeah, Johns. Yeah. Stratford Johns and Ronald Lacey. I'm sure you know who they are, sir. Uh, of, of course. <laughs> I don't know who they are. <laughs> uh, Ronald Lacey's the chap who gets incinerated in... Indiana in the first Indiana Jones from Red of the Lost Ark. He gets the, uh, uh, the ray of light, his oh. face melts. That's him. Yeah. And oh, Stratford. Him. Yeah. Oh, gosh. I know the Avengers as well. Yeah. Stratford Johns from Z Cars, of course, and other stuff. Um, so, yeah, they, they, they're they very poor, apparently. The, the Legacy of Death is a Maltese hmm. Falcon uh, ripoff, and the characters are called Sydney Street and Humbert Green as opposed to Sydney Green Street. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's very silly, but yeah, wow. the, the the Ford the yeah. Ford V8 FLC10. Um, is that something you ever driven? So you ever ever done a shoot on one of those? I have, but not not the standard one. I've I've only I've driven a few or been in a few uh, modified ones working for the Hot Rod magazines. Um, there, there's simply more modified ones than standard ones out there now, um, and so it's kind of hard to put a comparison to. And they are beautiful cars. I love the Art Deco styling on them, especially the. Um, the the headlights which in america they tend to call them the 40 ford headlights um looking at the photo here and yeah. they were a great hot rodders over and they got transplanted to all kinds of things in sort of decades that followed that's like a really nice sort of grill and uh i fact, the 40 ford in america was one of the favorite hot rod bases for for years to come as well i suppose in 1960 well mid 60s 30 year old ford v8 would be dirt cheap virtually on the on the on the road to the scrap paper wouldn't it yeah, in the episode, you see the car coming around a corner with doors falling open and it, it's blowing a huge cloud of smoke <laughs> out the back of it. Um, so, yeah, at, you know, he, yeah. Trafford John's walking around with his shoes and they've got holes in the soles of them and things. They're so poor. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Every it's, cliche going then. I know, it's, it's, it's silly. But the edges is silly, though. Um, so next we go on to yeah. one of pro probably one of the most famous cars um, of the Avengers is not a main cast car. Which is a 1961 mm. Jaguar E Type from Dead Man's Treasure, uh, 648 CYV. Now, um, back in January, when we were over in the New Forest filming with uh, the New Forest Classic Car Hire Company, um, we got a trial E Type, didn't we? Mm, yeah, that, that was a fixed head, though, wasn't it? That was a fixed head Type One and a Half, or was it Type Two? Um, this is a, this is an e a convertible, isn't it? In the um, yeah, in the Avengers. Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, no, it's one of the. Yeah, this is a very early flat floor, 61. Yeah, yeah, I think the one we drove would be a bit more pleasant to drive um, because we've got the, the step floor to get, get your feet into it and a bit more, more space in the cabin. Um, yeah, it's, it's one of those all-time great cars. Everyone should, if they get the opportunity to drive any type, you definitely should because there's really nothing quite like it. Um, it's, it's a vaguely intimidating car to drive because of the length of that, that bonnet is a bit ridiculous and you always a bit concerned that you're going to knock it into something even like a tall curb or something is going to come around and, and bankrupt you um but uh yeah no, they are a quite a special thing to drive um, oh absolutely uh moss gearbox in, yeah. in this early flat floor car there's a similar yeah. car really to the one yeah. that was used in um the um italian job that was also in a very early flat floor series one like this that car mm. i think does still exist it was wasn't um, it yeah. Yeah, yeah, they both still exist, I think. And this one, okay. actually, um, the, they had an accident, actually, in this, that because it was scripted, they were going to crash into a tree. And I think they had a second car yeah. that crashed. But the accident is ridiculous. Like, you know, the, the, but the whole front of the bonnet is, is just all sort of messed up. And, um, I mean, in 67, oh, when they filmed this, an early E-Type would have not been that expensive. So they would have been able to get to, to get no. one to crash. Yeah. Well, come in the late sixties, early seventies, a series one E type would be like yeah, a couple hundred pounds, like a three hundred pound banger, wouldn't it? Effectively, because uh, 
well out of fashion by that point. Is so, yeah, it would be a, a very cheap thing to destroy back at the time. That's that's right. Yeah, it's it's a it's quite a that was quite an interesting thing to see. Um, there are some other retypes in the in the Avengers, but we'll move on now to a 1954 Leyland Titan. Now, Mother, who was Steed's boss effectively for the final series of the Avengers, mm. he used to, used to move around his headquarters all the time. And probably the most famous headquarters he had was this Leyland Titan that he he moved around the Borenwood mm. area in in episode False Witness, the one with the, the, the drugged milk. Um, have you ever, ever been in one of those mm. one of yeah. the really old buses, sir? I don't know. The thing is, I'm not a great bus expert. I know plenty of people who are big bus freaks, bussies, I think you call them, and uh, they know all about them. And they would go down to the actual proper model number, same as we would with a with a car. Um, I've been offered a chance to drive a couple of buses, but I don't think one of them is one of these. So I can't say a lot about it. I'm curious why, if you're head of a, a national security agency, while you're driving a, a 15 year old bus rather than a new bus. <laughs> well, but maybe that's the point. It kind of looks anonymous, isn't it? I guess so, yeah. But it's not got the, the uh, steering and acceleration to evade um, capture if you needed to get away in your mobile headquarters. No, no, not really. Um, and also an open rear deck as well, making it quite hard to defend. Yeah, yeah, because the, in the episode, the other agents just get on and off at the back. <laughs> <That's> just... <laughs> My point exactly. So. <laughs> yeah, it is, it is a bit silly. Um, let's now go on to... They keep killing Steed and a 1936 Mercedes Benz 540K driven by Ian Ogilvy. Oh, wow. Was that his own car? No, I don't think so. Um, we don't know much about this car. We don't know if it's even still around. Um, registration mm. NTR164. That's a local plate to down here, actually. It's a Southampton plate um, or Portsmouth, okay, yeah. one of the two. Um, I don't know whether that was a re-registration or something, but they they have a quite a chase in that through Burnham Beaches because Burnham Beaches in the 60s of a, a TV mm. series was where you had your car chases. Um, and um, it, it races a, a car that we'll talk about much later on um, through Burnham mm. Beaches and kicks up big clouds of dust. Um, have you ever seen, oh, okay. ever seen one of these cars? I've never seen one in my life, ever before. I think I've seen one in a museum. I've been... I've been to a couple of um, really good car museums on the continent. Uh, I think I've seen one in the Schlumpf collection down on the uh, in France, but kind of on the Swiss border. Um, I'm pretty sure I saw one of those, and it's not far off the old SSK, is it? Uh, in terms of design, and I had an FX model kit, one of them, but it's not quite the same. <laughs> no, not at all. Be they're, they're, beautiful. They are gorgeous cars, and they were very, very high powered in their day, weren't they? They were one of those. Yeah, quickest, most best handling cars of the time back in the 30s. Yeah, it was certainly out handle one of the Bentleys, wasn't it? Oh, God, yeah, that was, a, well, as we know, a truck. A truck with a big engine. <laughs> yeah. One of the things about Dead Man's Treasure is, which we're going to move on to again now, another Mercedes, a 250SE Cabriolet, uh, LUC 507D, which I suspect was a Mercedes-Benz supplied car or supplied by a dealer beautiful old car mm. you see these cars going down a road and the Bentley's sort of chasing the Mercedes and the e-type and things like that and you think how inordinately inord dangerous it was for all the <laughs> time um, but particularly Rocky Taylor who was driving the Bentley um just taking mm. corners and blind corners and whatever um the were they closing the road to this or were they just hoping for the best I think they closed the road um yeah. most of the time as far as I know yeah. but yeah, I mean, if it went wrong, mm. it went wrong. It just the way it was. Spectacularly wrong. Yeah. Um, because then, the around in one of these. It, you, do you know these um, these uh, two fifty SEs well? Yeah, they're beautiful cars. Um, is this the the Fintail or the Stacklight -like generation we're talking about here? It's the Fintail, isn't it? It's a Fintail. Yeah, it's it, it's got it's got kind of quite high headlamps on it, but it is. Yeah, it is, is, the Stacklight -like name is a bit confusing because two or three generations have very similar headlights, but only one yeah. is known as the Stacklight. -like. So. Yeah, that 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 stack light I think came out the next sort of a little bit after this. The next W one one five I think. Yeah, and yeah. W one eleven with Intel. That's that's right. This is this is with an S in it, so I think it's it's kind of a little bit the upper echelon. This would have been a very very expensive yeah. car in nineteen sixty seven. Oh yeah, yeah. Looking at the prices of of Mercedes in the sixties into the seventies, 
they were, they were more than a house in some cases. They were insanely expensive. Yeah, so, not, it's also funny seeing a big heavy car that's with no ABS. So there's one bit where I yeah. think, I, think um, I can't remember if Dino Rig or Norman Bull, who's the villains driving it, that they both actually drive this car. And they come up to a farm mm. in, in, near um, Shenley in Hertfordshire and they stamp on the brakes and like the thing dives down like a, <laughs> like a ship on a rough sea. You're like, oh my God. <laughs> it's, so, it's, it's so scary. Waiting, just waiting for the backseat passengers to fly over the, the windscreen and. Uh, yeah, no, no, no seat belts or anything. No, no, of course not. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They're for cowards. <laughs> what well, one Mercedes that I do know um, the model code of is a, a W115 used in Requiem, which is about mm. the sort of third to last episode or something. And it's a, of course, yeah. a black Mercedes, and so it's driven by the villains. Um, I think you were driven a yeah. W115. Uh, yeah, I think they're lovely things. They are not as fast as you expect them to be, unless you get one of the bigger engine ones. So many of them are the smaller, sort of two liter, 2.3, those kind of, oh, 2.3? Those kind of smaller engine ones, the four cylinders anyway which have all the looks and all the style, but not the go. You need the six pot for real excitement. But they are just so well made. I mean, th there really is nothing like an old Mercedes in terms of quality. Uh, unlike, they're very soft, but in a different way to the, the French cars. They've got a nice composed ride that just really comforts you into thinking you can go anywhere and do anything and your car will be there for you and survive literally anything. They are, and the, the craftsmanship and the materials are just fantastic. And that's why I've got a, a new ish C class now because I've got the W123, which kind of carried on that tradition of unbreakability. And when I started taking it apart, I thought, wow, these cars are just so well made. I've ne never taken anything apart quite like it. And uh, no, I think they're wonderful cars. I would very much like to own one. I really like the um, dashboards as well with the, 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 um, yeah. the two circles and the kind of ver twin vertical bits in between as well. And yeah, they're great. Yeah, I mean, this one's a 220, it's a 68 model, mm. I think it's TMP, I do 4F, um, so four-cylinder one, this is the sort of thing, yeah. but you'd see the taxi in Germany, or probably the diesel one, yeah. and... I think you could pick okay, um, a colour manual change on them, couldn't you, if on the taxi one, so you could fit an extra passenger in. Yeah, it might. This one might have been. I don't know. It, it, it looks like a floor change, but I, I, I don't know. Um, there's yeah. others in the event. I think as well. you have one together. Mm. Yeah, yeah. So from that to the MGC, um, which yeah. was a failed attempt to make a faster MGB, but um, the handling's not great in those. I, I gather. Well, it's not if you drive it out of the box, but if you do a couple of really basic modifications, like change them onto modern radial tyres, that for one on its own transforms the handling. Um, if you put better suspension on it, which is you know, a sensible upgrade, um, that just those two things, just change the shocks, change the the tyres, it's a great car, because the engine has got loads more poke than a, an M MGB had. Um, yeah, it's just cause radial, radials couldn't take the weight of that engine because it's a bigger heavier engine on the six cylinder and uh, yeah just sort it yourself and you've got a great car and um, people who've got them now know that and so any mgc that still exists is going to be sorted and be far better than it was when it was new and they yeah. are quite exciting cars then because you've got real drive and yeah you can throw them around yeah but this, this one is a very early one it's a 68 false plate episode mm. called killer where Linda Forson was replaced by a lady called um, Jennifer Croxton. Um, definitely mm -hmm. not modified this one. And of course, you see the bonnet bulge in it. Um, white Broadster type thing. It's interesting to see mm -hmm. it, but you know, it was. We'll, we'll talk more about the engine a little bit later on because that appears in another car that you've driven, doesn't mm -hmm. it? It does. It does yeah, very soon indeed. Yeah. Then we go into talking about not a Morris Minor. But it's a 1963 the o Morris 600 weight O type van, um, which is mm. driven by a chap called Michael Latimer. Do you know who Michael Latimer is? Oh, remind me. I know the name. I can't think where, where I've seen him in. He was just uh, he was in New Avengers and other other stuff. Um, he plays He's a, like a regular bit part character. Yeah, exactly. He he plays a, a, an actor who is electrically charged, and so he goes around with makeup and 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 this sort of. Or his own little thing, but and if, he, <laughs> if he shocks you, then you die because you get electrocuted. Oh, oh fair enough, yeah. <laughs> but, yeah you, there are so you, many more small, 
so there, there are so many more, more sequels to Austin Powers just waiting to happen without even changing these scripts. <laughs> I, I know, it's very, it's very silly because he drives around in this little blue non-threatening van that looks like a local plumber. And um, yeah, yeah, he's like a supervillain. It's very silly. Um, but anyway, well, yes. A um, practical supervillain. A yeah. practical supervillain. And actually that was filmed around the kind of Watford area. Um, Mm. I've been to where where it was filmed. It was at what's called British Rail Centre, which is now a very fancy hotel. Mm. Um, what's it? C CMF two six three A. We'll talk about another one of the cars used in that episode a bit later, which I think you'll very much mm. like. Um, and then mm. we have uh, a very rare car, a nineteen sixty five. Interruption, sir. Yeah, he's getting the iPad charger from his iPad. <laughs> yes. It's your iPad. My iPad. He's got a key charger. Still. Every day. Yeah. Every Sorry about that. Of your life. Every waking bit. Hang on, you Every can stop, stop talking now. <laughs> and I do like a Morris Minor. They're one of my favourite things to, to run around in. They're, they're really good, fun cars. They're a little bit wayward, but that kind of teaches you to, to drive and control a car in awkward positions. <laughs> Didn't Sterling Moss learn to drift a car in a, in a Morris Minor, allegedly? Yes, and yeah. you drove one on your channel, didn't you, recently? About a year ago. Uh, a little while ago now. I, think I need to redo it because the audio wasn't very good. Um, people kept telling me the audio wasn't very good. <laughs> but it was a, with the roof off, it really picked up the wind noise. So I need to go and do that one again. That was actually a recreation convertible. Um, recreation? A Canterbury, a Canterbury convertible, which is where Canterbury conversions cut the roof off uh, a two door and turn it into a convertible. Oh, right. Yeah. They put in all the strength and all all the, the braces and gussets and things, so you can't tell unless you know. So it's a bit, it's a bit nicer than the van then? A little bit, but I do actually quite like the van, to be honest. I think I would like either a Traveller with a, a much bigger hot engine in it, or a van, just to be really nondescript. Yes, yeah, so you go, go around plot, plot, plotting your dastardly schemes to take a well by well, execution. Yeah, <laughs> exactly, yeah. Yes. <laughs> or, um, or holding so, traffic. <laughs> so a, a similar colour, but a very different type of car now. Um, a 1965 mm. Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud 3 Sports Saloon by H.J. Mulliner, mm. um, which is used Very in the episodes Have Guns Will Haggle and You'll Catch Your Death, uh, CDK 978C. Mm. It was a car that was seen a lot in television at the time. There's other series that you can see it in as well. Why on earth the chap who's dressed as a postman gets driven around mm. in this car? I don't know. The plot of the episode is that a mad scientist has created a, um, a bug that's like all the diseases um, that you can catch in a world together, and it's in an envelope, and it gets through in a post, and then it will kill you because you catch your death. But he has this yeah. postman's uniform on, the, the henchman who delivers the post, and um, he drives around in a Rolls Royce. It's not very, it's a bit inconspicuous, it's not very inconspicuous, is it? I mean, you might as no. well... No, you drive around in a, in a Morris Minor, in a Morris Minor or Morris six hundred weight O type van with a Royal Mail on it, not a, a special body no, Rolls Royce Silver Cloud. No, that's not your subtle way of doing things, is it? Everyone's going to stop and stare, aren't they? Whilst you get out, well, yeah, in a, in a postman's uniform from the back, you're a millionaire eccentric postman or something. Uh, no, it's a bit weird. They're lovely cars though, but uh... <laughs> I, I know it's completely <laughs> stupid. Yeah. yeah. No, so it's a lovely car. Um, I've, been, I've sat in them uh, on, on photo shoots, but I've not driven one. And they are extremely nice to be in, um, especially in the back. Um, but the, the wood is just exquisite and, you know, the, the lambs will floor mats and things are just no, just the height of luxury, aren't they, really? They're, they're not fast, they're not sophisticated, they're just very comfortable. What do you say they're, they're not fast? Shot, already... Say they're not fast. We'll, we'll, later on, we'll see just how fast they are. Um, when we look at a, a normal <laughs> standard a silver cloud in the fear merchants, but uh, we'll get back to it later. Mm. First of all, we're, we're going to go yeah. another luxury, an Alvis TF21 from 1966. Um, oh, I like these. Yeah. Yes, CAN 972D. That's for the, the second to last year of Alvis productions when they stopped making mm. cars yeah. completely after that. Have you ever seen, have seen one of these in real life? Yeah, I've seen, I think I've seen a couple of them um, doing sort of photo shoots, for magazines, and at, at car shows. They're, they're stunning-looking things, and it's such a big car for a two-seater. It's really quite unusual for a, a British or European car to be sort of following that American mold of massive personal luxury vehicle. Normally, two-seaters and 
in the UK especially tend to be quite a lot smaller. Um, they're very nice indeed. I love the stack light look, a bit facile vega-ish, but I think a bit prettier. Yeah, years ago on the internet, I thought it was a facile vega. This is before we had things like the internet movie car database to tell you. And you oh, just yeah. Guess. And, That's a great uh, website, isn't it? <laughs> it? It is. It's very useful. Um, very useful indeed. Um, mm. This particular car used in Death's Door, it used to run someone over. I mean, if you were going to run someone over and you knew you were going to do it, why on earth would you use a grabber bodied um, Alvis to do it? <laughs> You just find something else to do it with. It's very silly. Literally anything else. It'd be cheaper yeah. to buy a new car, just walk into a dealership and buy a new car, than to get the panel work repaired on an Alvis. I know, so. it's absolutely insane. Um, another and also, crazy... it'd be the only Alvis for 100 miles around as well, so not, again, not inconspicuous. If you went and bought an Austin 1100, there'd be 10,000 of them within 100 miles. It's the only one Alvis in London. So <laughs> you're not going to get away with it. So this is the Avengers. I mean, Brian Clemens, who was one of the main creative forces behind it in his later years, he just, he clearly chose things like this. So it was all a bit ludicrous and it was a, a bit mm -hmm. otherworldly. And, um, you know, that's just the way it is. Um, another yeah. otherworldly car from the 60s is uh, the 1965 Amphicar Model 770, mm -hmm. which is uh, used right at the end of an episode called um, Castle Diath. Um, which which um, co-stars Gordon Jackson and Robert Urquhart mm. um, and that everybody wears kilts including Patrick McNee and at of the course. end they, 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 of course and at the end they drive, they drive the amphi car into a lake but unfortunately yeah. it's not in Scotland it's in, in Pinner but there we go never mind mm. um, well, I've, I've, not seen, I've not only seen one I've seen a couple of them I've been swimming in them about twice as well it's a really strange experience um, because you have to have bilge pumps running because they do dribble a little bit and you have to make sure that when you shut the doors you pull the second door handle to lock the doors in tight turn the bilge pumps on and then turn the propeller on and off you go um, it's a yeah it's a bizarre experience but huge fun one of the most mad and enjoyable things you can do in a in an amphibious car they're a bit weird on the road because they're so tall so the handling's not particularly good i think they're they're quite car like as a boat and quite boat like as a car um, in terms of handling <laughs> Yeah, yeah. But Apparently, are. that particular car still exists. Actually, that that um, that that Most particular one. Do. It, it does. Yeah, it's ELK nine one eight C. That one's still around. Yeah. I, think, I think it's a Triumph Herald engine. I think it's got That's swing right, axles yeah. on it, like a Herald, but with some Beetle bits. Yeah. It was German, wasn't it, an Amphi car? Um, yeah, I'm not sure. I think it might have been. I was actually German or British, and I can't remember which. I think I asked the owner of the one I drove, which was um a record-breaking channel crossing car it's still got a pair of oars on the on the boot deck lid that they, they put on just in case they broke down halfway across <laughs> yeah because they did actually take a fleet of them across the channel didn't they in the 60s yeah i think this was the first one to do it and so this one's like a commemorated known car um but yeah we, we did it for i photographed the same car for two different car magazines and both times we we swam it so it was great fun that's 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 classic um, yeah. Another another car um, that appears in other in other media. Um, Nigel Davenport, I'm sure you know who he is. Mm -hmm. um, he, yeah. in an episode called Split, drives a 1967 Aston Martin DBS Vantage um, YKX 2F. That was a very early Aston Martin mm. um, sort of demonstrator type car or pre-production car. Um, Nigel Davenport, of course, plays a very rich lord. Um, you need to be to afford one of those. Um, you ever driven one of those? You ever driven a DBS? I've sat in one. Uh, again, I've sort of been a passenger in it or sat in one on photo shoot, but I've not driven one. It's not my favourite Aston. It's not the best looking car. It's very much of its time, but I think the styling went a bit off off the boil for that particular model. Um, it's not the most valuable of Astons. I think other people share the same opinion. It's a nice engine, nice, um, nice, yeah, nice thing to be in, but. I just don't really, the styling does not do a lot for me. Yes, well, perhaps you, you, you prefer um, the 1930 Austin 7 short wheelbase still saloon in uh, which Actually, given the choice, I would take the 7. Give, uh, I would take the 7 over the, uh, the Aston. Because you've actually a short driven one of, uh, one of these on your channel, haven't you? I have. That wasn't the first Austin 7 I've driven. I've, I've actually driven a half dozen or so of them. I think they're wonderful cars and I really want one. I just don't have anywhere dry and secure to keep one because you can't lock it and they leak like crazy. So you'd need a shed of some sort to put it into. And that's kind of, 
a major factor to me not having one and I'd have to boot something inside of a garage to put it in. I couldn't park that one on the street outside. It wouldn't be there in the morning. That they are hilarious. A short wheelbase on an Austin 7 is a hilarious idea as well because they're already barely any longer than the engine in one seat anyway. So <laughs> Yeah, yeah. The funny thing about this particular car, it's a, it's a JH355. Uh, it's used in an episode called Wish You Were Here. Um, mm. The main location of that is the Edge Hotel, just um, just in Borehamwood, where they filmed School for Scoundrels with um, Terry Thomas and people like that. Mm. Um, the character arrives at the hotel as an eccentric, and he decides to put all his equipment inside to, inside the car, which is ludicrous. He has things like skis and snowshoes and tennis rackets and things. And um, yeah, it's supposed to be funny, but you know, in a sixties kind of way. <laughs> So yes. now we go into another Austin, um, actually two yep. Austins, the Austin 3 litre. Now, um, in Who Was That Man I Saw You With, it's a very long episode title, there is a 1968 mm. um, 3 litre deluxe. You can tell this because um, it's got the quarter lights. On the, I can't remember which way around it. Some, so, the early cars ever don't or, or do or do, don't have the quarter lights and they have different wheels. This is a an earlier one, um, RUE 365F. Um, and then in the interrogator, there's a different Austin 3 litre. This is a standard production model from, I think they launched it September um, 68, and this episode was filmed October 68. Um, both these cars were supplied by BNC, or British Leyland. It's sort of the crossover mm. year, so I can't tell you which. Um, yeah. NOV 319F. The one you drove, though, was a 71, wasn't it? The one you had. It's a mm, really it was, late yeah, one. it's a fairly late one. Yeah, um, it was very nice to be in. It was very big and wafty, and it got the very clever rear suspension that keeps the back of the car nice and level at all times, which is developed by Rolls-Royce, if I remember rightly, the rear suspension on that thing. Um, yeah, that's right. They, they, they were going to launch a version of that car called a Bentley Java, which they never oh, did. Were they? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Because, because was it car... after the underwhelming response to the Austin? Yeah, because, because this car replaced the... Um... Uh, Vandenpla 4 litre R, which we'll talk about a bit mm. later. And you drove a Vandenpla, but not with a 4 litre engine, didn't you, as well? Yeah, the smaller um, engine, yeah. Yeah, they had this sort of partnership. They were going to launch it to Bentley Java, but it never never happened. So, yeah, there might have been a little bit of Rolls-Royce input in the engineering. But the problem with that car, I always found, is it. I, I, I like the look of it, but it just looks like a land crab that's been well, it, it basically is. It is. It's got land crab doors, isn't it? So it's it has so proportion. Why would you pay like way more money but for something that was a little bit faster than a twenty two hundred, but mm. but not quite, and still had the sort of you know like quite plain look. Yeah, in, inside it was a bit nice. It got much nicer wood on the dashboard, which actually I thought looked a bit nineteen thirties ish. The the styling of the dash uh, got nice car, nicer carpets but not actual leather seats. It was like the vinyl leather seats rather than actual leather. Uh, much more legroom, obviously, especially in the back. But I think the problem with it was, is that what, it was an Austin. And if you're trying to charge that kind of premium and present that kind of image, you can't do it on a car or with a brand that's always been the working man's entry-level car. You need to stick it on one of your premium brands. If they stuck it on one of the, the posher badges and then put proper leather in it rather than the plastic leather, it might have been okay. But also, a lot of people in the company high up weren't that keen on the project in the first place. And so it was never given the attention and the money and the, 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 the love that it deserved to make it into what it could have been. Yeah, I mean, by 71, the BMC who designed the car um, had been in on British Leyland. And I, I think that was mm. why they sort of launched the car kind of twice, which is why you see these sort of different versions in these two episodes is because... Mm. Um, they were probably working whether they're going to continue or not. And eventually they made about about 10,000 of them, I think. But yeah, they really had, small numbers. Yeah, but they had, um, you know, the Triumph 2000, the Rover 2000, Rover 3500, um, Jaguars as the Rover well. The Rover V8 was really competing with it. Yeah, the Jaguar and the Davis were really what they were competing with. I think the, the Rovers and the Triumphs were as quick, but a different market. I think they were... Uh, management but a different kind of person would have bought it a younger person would have bought the triumph or the rover yeah the yeah but, but when you've got these many cars under one company you don't oh, need yeah. some of them do you lots of overlap no and they, they killed a lot of cars out of production or out of development which could have been great but then they left other things going which 
didn't need to go. <laughs> yeah, not, it, it, not the best management, I don't think, at the time. Yeah, exactly. Um, so one of the um, one of the cars that actually um, was supposed to be replaced by the Land Crab was the Austin Cambridge mm. A60. And yeah. the only version was called the A55 Mark II because it had the 1.5 litre engine. The A60s had the 1.6. There's two mm. of these. Um, actually, there's, there's more in the Avengers, but just, just talking about <laughs> Austin Asia over the A60s, we've got um, there's one in Requiem. Um, it's a 66 LGF 342D. And there's a, a, another one in Take Me to Your Leader. Again, both these episodes from the sort of Linda Forsen era. Uh, GAM 345F, both 66 models. Um, when you drove the Cambridge, which I think was, was that the early part of this year? Five. It was earlier this year. Uh, yeah, I think it was, yeah. Yeah. How was, how was that? How was, how was driving the Cambridge earlier this year? It was very nice. It was, uh, the, the nice family cars. They've got a nice gear change. The ride's a bit choppy. Um, and the brakes aren't that incredible. And given that, if I was buying one of those back in, the late 60s i think i would have gone to the roots dealership and driven off in a roots product rather than the bmc products because I, I felt the roots one handled and was built a bit better but it was a nice exciting style i love the grill on it um the the big big grill with sort of so many different elements of stamped metal that were pressed together with designs going in different directions is incredibly detailed which i've never really noticed or appreciated before until i took time to go stare at it for a few minutes and yeah, the, the mid atlantic style was quite cool. The Austrians had these sort of wavy line grills at the time, and that's how you told them apart. And the A55 Mark II, the one mm. you drove, had different fins from the A60, which is the that's type right, yeah. that we discussed, because the, the fins on the A55 Mark II are enormous. I was going to say, yeah, they're much, much more extravagant and yeah, yeah over the top, yeah. Well, I, th I think I even I by 61, 62, when they brought in the, the A60, that was considered like it had its time hadn't it the sort of 59 oh, yeah, cadillac yeah, the, was the, the one that, gone. yeah the 59 cadillac was the one that the biggest fins ever seen on any car and you know they sort of, you yeah. know it was a way it was around for a time but I, I think the cambridge would have and the oxford and every other derivative of that because there was six different versions of it um that yeah. would have looked very yeah. dated by the time that these episodes were filmed in 68 69 i should support Oh, definitely, yeah. Yeah, because it was all fuselage designed by them, wasn't it? The, the clean looks and the flat fenders and, yeah, yeah, things are much different. Yeah, yeah. So in, in the curious case of the Countless Clues, again, um, with uh, Peter Jones wearing his Deerstalker hat, um, there's a 1955 mm -hmm. Bentley S1, which is similar to a Rolls Royce mm -hmm. Silver Cloud. Um, have you uh, driven an S1 or an S2? Um, what is just the Silver uh, Clouds you've been in? Been I can't remember. I think I've just been in the Silver Clouds. So you know, yeah. I can't really remember. Um, uh, okay. I've, I've not definitely not driven one. I think I may have, may have sat in one on a, on a photo shoot. Um, yeah. From the back from the back seat, there's not a lot to tell between that and the Rolls Royce. To be honest, they're both extremely opulent and very comfortable. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, I've seen I've seen cars, I've seen one of these. I've not I've not been in one. I've, I've seen. An S1, this is a very early one, it's a 55 S1, 285 mm. FLA, and the character's name he drives it's called um, uh, Mr. Flanders. He's, uh, he's um, <laughs> played by Edward D'Souza, who's in, someone else you might have heard of, maybe not. Um, and it, uh, FLA is his name, so it, that's why the plate is that. Um, then we get on oh, to yeah. a very weird car. Um, it's a 1959 Citroen ID 19 Confort. Um, which is a left-hand drive car. You only see it in one little shot. It's um, we they think it's a Belgian assembled car for the Amer American market, right. but it's a Citroen, and it looks in that episode. Photo now. It's, it, it's it, it's a very weird version of the of the nineteen, isn't it? Of the day Yeah. Is it been crashed or has it got a very strange bumper? It, it's got. It, it looks like it's really rusty and horrible and dirty. Um, it is. It does it really grubby, but the front bumper looks really weirdly curved as well. So yeah, I don't know. I don't know. It could be. It could be just like an export model. I think they were built in Belgium. The ID was mm. the, the the like the base model of the DS range. Yeah, the absolute poverty spec thing. Yeah. Yeah, and it's a left-hand drive, and for some reason it's driven by a Russian, mm. um, played by Philip Madlock, who I'm sure you've heard of. Yeah, 
I've just looking at the little um, Austin van behind it in the, in, the, in the still from the TV show. It's quite interesting. Yeah, um, I don't. Think, unfortunately, we're not going to have time to talk about talk about those. Oh. Um, but, uh, but but yeah, it, it's seven, this one's seventy BLX. I thought it was the same as a car used in the same, but I don't think it is because um, I've no. done a comparison. I'm that kind of person. Um, that's, yeah, uh, that, that's interesting like, with the. Uh, oh, sorry. Yeah, the carry on. I was going to say with the 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 nineteen, you've not got all the, the the turning headlights and the fun bits that kind of no. make it as fun as a, a DS. It's very very pared back, isn't it? Yeah, I, th I think that the ID nineteen didn't even have power steering, as far as I remember. I think they were pared back. Possibly and not. No. no power steering. Yeah. Um, so let's let's talk about Comma Space Vans. Um, mm. Have you ever driven a Comma Space Van, sir? No, I remember them from when I was little and being quite old vans that were around. I remember them being looking a bit kind of creepy and weird when I was a youngster. Um, being a bit creeped out by them. I think possibly because that big curved front and also because the wheels were so inset, they looked just strange. Um, they're a Dodge, aren't they? Or were they sold as a Dodge as well? Yeah, I, I mean, I call right. it a common space van, but towards the end it was known... Mm. It was known as the um, Dodge Space Van, and the only people who actually still ate, who bought them towards the end were um, po the post office and then BT from 1981. They mm. made them a very long time. This is a very early one. Um, it wasn't even known as the Space Van; it was known as the 1500 um, FC. Um, this is from actually mm. called the Danger Makers, and you see it go over like a bump, and the whole thing just like buckles like this it's sort of suspension <laughs> going, whoa it must have been interesting really? driving that and if you if you die if you crash you die because you're right at the front as well oh, um, yeah. the, yeah, the only way you could take yeah. the engine out of the of, of the um of the car i think was either taking the door off or going through the windscreen wow so you couldn't uh, go oh, so the front axle was underneath it so you couldn't go out from underneath no I, no yeah. no because the engine's right the engine's right between the seats where you are at the, the front yeah. Um, so lots of space, but mm. are not very good in terms of ease of service and not very good in terms of the crash. I think you'd no. be pretty dead. No. <laughs> no, I've, I've, I remember them being around, but I don't think I've ever been in one. I think I know where one is, and I want to, to take it for a test drive for a review. But, uh, I, well, that's going to have to wait a while for the time being anyway. So, yeah, <laughs> absolutely. Only, only very limited test drives at the moment. Um, and, and again, yeah. the, another really, really uncommon car, a 1966 DAF 44. Um, mm. in the C3 Man, which is an episode which has Warren Mitchell with a um, a Russian accent, which um, you know, you know, you know, Warren Mitchell from um, Till Death yeah. Do Us Part or something. Um, yeah, he's a terror. For some reason, the Avengers crew loved having Warren Mitchell and him putting on stupid accents. And he he, he put in Russian accent in three different episodes, and this is the the last one. Um, but he doesn't drive it, it's driven by an, another person, but um, we hmm. think it's KOW 807D. Uh, have you ever come across one of these DAF 44s? I don't remember if it's a 44 or not, but one of my grandmothers, one of my, one of my, my nans had a lot of really nice cars, and the other one hardly drove at all and only had one or two cars her entire life, and one of them was a rear-engine DAF. And I'm trying to remember if it was a 44 or the one that came after it. Um, yeah. Like bright orange. Yeah, and it had the Boeing drive on it, the, the very amatic. Um, and I, it was one of the first cars I ever got to drive because we went over to a farm in it to pick some fruit one day and pick your own place. And I got to drive this very amatic DAF up and down the farm track when I was about, I don't know, twelve or thirteen or something. Um, so yeah, quite fond memories of them. They're just funny little things, though. Very small, strange, peculiar smell of the fabric in it. I remember. Um, yeah. Um, I don't and know why. they rear engine as well. I think they were front engine, but they had the gearbox in the back. Really? Oh, maybe, maybe the one after had a rear engine, and I'm sure uh, it was rear engine. Had air cooled as well, or, or not? I I don't remember. remember um, we'll have to let the DAF experts deal with that, sir. Um, Come in on this thing. Now I'll go. I'll Google it quickly. Yes. Um, what, what model? DAF sixty six, is it? No. DAF forty four. No, I was thinking the later models, F44, Wikipedia. Come on, you can cut this bit out of the, the thing. Oh, just pause it. Death 44 was twin it. Uh, 44 was two cylinder. Uh, front engine, rear wheel drive on the 44. You're right. Excellent, sir. <laughs> uh, we're, we're, we're learning something today. Um, 
stuff I didn't need to know. No, exactly. <laughs> what about the uh, Ford Console Corsair that's in um, in, in, in Murdersville? Do you um, have you ever, ever done anything with a, with a Corsair? Yeah, I've been in a, a couple of them. What, most recently, I've been in a convertible one. Um, the Crayford a, one. A featuring. Uh, yeah, must have been actually. Yeah, um, quite an interesting one. The guy had uh, restored his his convertible, and because he'd had a few Corsairs, he had a few shells lying around, and he built uh, the rear half of a second Corsair into a trailer, which, when he opened it up, was a barbecue. So he could take his convertible Corsair um, anywhere he wanted and have uh, have meals on the go. Wow, I mean, this this isn't as interesting as that. This is a bog standard one. Um, it's a pre V four one. It's a pre V four one. So it'll have mm. the I think what's the, the pre cross flow engine. I think they call it. Um, yeah. It's ABH two seven six B. As far as I remember, in in, in Murdersville, um, the, the car was supplied by, by by one of the actors because the one he's supposed to drive had broken down or something. So <laughs> this is a last minute thing. It's not that interesting, really, but you know. Mm. Um, that, that that Crayford convertible with the little thing on the back sounds a lot more interesting than. Um, it was hilarious. It was really good. He sounds... just opened the boot and there's a there's a griddle underneath it. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And from behind, you, from behind, it looks like you're following a Corsair until you pull pull alongside it and you realise it's half as long again because it's on on tow. It's quite cool. Yeah. That's pretty. That's, that's that's pretty good. Um, so next we've got um, we have to call the Grave Diggers, which is. Another one that's completely insane. That's just what happens in the Avengers. Um, a 1953 yeah. Honda Pullman hearse by Alpen Saunders, uh, DJJ 676. Um, have you ever, ever come across one of these ridiculous old Humbers? Yeah, I'm not sure I have. I might have seen one at a show, perhaps. I've never sat in one. I've certainly never driven one. They're a weird-looking thing, aren't they? Because um, the way those the wings, almost separate wings and fenders with a big or sort of low area, but before you hit the bonnet, it's kind of trying to be all in one design, but at the same time trying to hang on to the old separate front wing design at the same time. They're a, they're a very peculiar looking thing. So they came in what, the late forties, early fifties they came out? Yeah, about 1950. Have you ever um, mm -hmm. noticed in Dr. No with the, the, the car chase with the, the hearse, when the Cadillac hearse goes off the cliff, it becomes one of these Pullmans? Have you, have oh you, no, I hadn't noticed that. We noticed that. Well, that's the sort of person I am, so you. Yeah. I, do, I do often spot that kind of thing I'll, I'll be looking at the car and when they crash it I'll be looking to see if they've substituted a, a cheaper one or, a, or an older one or something to, to save wrecking the expensive one but I guess well, were these a lot less valuable or did they need the Cadillac one for retakes later on perhaps yeah I, I don't know um, I mean that happened in Persuaders they made a Corsair into an Anglia happened in Man in a Suitcase mm -hmm. Um, where they had a mosque pitch that turned into a Ford Prefect, I think. And of course, an Italian job. They had the Aston Martin, I think it's a DB4 an Italian job. Yeah. And when they yeah. chucked it off the cliff, that was a Lancia Flaminia, and that was made to look like an Aston Martin. They didn't actually trash the Aston Martin. Um, no, they actually. To destroy. Yeah, so this is, this is the thing which I did in Dr. No. Um, another, mm. another Humber is an Imperial, which is driven actually by Patrick McNee himself mm. in an episode called To the Crowd, which again has Warren Mitchell with Russian accent in it. Um, this was yeah. supplied by Roots from Sales. They, they supplied a few cars actually, Roots, um, through about mm. 65, 66 to the Avengers. This is an Imperial, it's AWK um, 948B. Another similar car to the Imperial was, is a Super Snipe um, yeah. in the Fear Merchants, which is one of my favorite episodes actually, the Fear Merchants. Um, that, um, is a, a 65 Super Snipe Series 5 automatic mm. FRW 312C, both Coventry plates, and so obviously um, supplied by by Roots. And of course, you can visit where the factory was because Peugeot and and Citroen and and, and DS they still have yeah, their still there, office really. right there, so you can actually visit where yeah. these cars were yeah. made. Um, have you ever have you ever driven one of these old Humbers or the uh, the Super Snipe? I or well, both of them. I've the Imperial, I've been in a hot rodded version. Um, there's one really down here in Kent, which is yellow and lowered, and it's got a V8 in it. Um, it's, it's quite a bit different. I do love the styling of both of these, though. The Imperial is very American. Around that time in the late 50s, uh, Roots were making big inroads into America. They'd opened um, a New York office and a, and a California office, and they were trying to sell cars and trucks over in the States. So that 
clearly the styling is trying to appeal to the American look. And they're great looking cars though as well. And some, the Super Snipe, one of my favourite looking sort of 60s classics as well. The last one of those I've been in was an estate car oh, on a magazine shoot. Day. And mm -hmm. the Super Snipe estate is astonishingly rare. But no, it's got a real, oh, I just love the whole, the look of it, the size of it, the proportions just look really good. And they, yeah, typically 60s big, big car, they wallow and they're not massively quick, but they just feel great to be in. Yeah, apparently this particular one, uh, FRW312C is still around, and um, oh, really? that, that was yeah. driven in the episode by Garfield Borgen, as in, you know, the chap from The Sweeney, um, who's, who, yeah, yeah. who played one of the villains. Um, yeah, he drives to a quarry in, in, in the Super Snipe and has, has a fight with Patrick yeah, McMean, yeah. gets crushed by a bulldozer, as, as, as you do. Of course, do. yeah. Yeah, exactly, that's just what yeah, happens. Not as always every day, yeah. <laughs> yeah, let's talk about Jaguar Mark IIs. I'm sure you've driven one of these at some point in your yeah. life. Um, I've driven, yeah, a fair few of these. I like these a lot. Um, and, the, uh, and the S type, we've got, we've got, looking at the list, we've got oh, two, one, two, three Mark II Jags and an S type Jag. Yeah, so, yeah they're virtually the same car, but. Yeah, that's right. You as well, so I'm looking at this, four Jags in a row here. <laughs> uh, yeah, lo lots of them, so we can, we can skip through these quite quickly. In the C3 Man, um, well, there's a car change between the Elan and a, six, a 1960 Mark II. I can't read the plates on that, and I can't bother to go through the episode and find it, so <laughs> it's brown. Um, it's interesting, there. in reality, which would come up better between an Elan and a Mark II Jag? Because the, oh, the Mark gosh, II I don't know. is I it's, don't it's know. faster, obviously it's going to roll a bit more, but it does handle well. Oh. If they're well set up, they they do go nicely. Well, if if you're going to have like a sort of bit of, you know, kind kind of come kind of contact between the Elan and, and the Mark II, you know, the Elan's going to lose. Well, then you want to be in that, don't you? <laughs> don't want to be in that. Um, yeah. Well, obviously the Jaguar loses because you know Emma Peel is Emma Peel, and she and she course, you know yeah. better. Can't, can't lose. Yeah. Um, and you've just been murdered. Um, there's another one. It's a, it's a grey one. Um, number 1960 Mark II, 933HYL. Um, mm. The actor dr drives about his Simon Oates, who once played John Steed in a, in a stage play of the Avengers in 1971. There you are, sir. <laughs> There's some irrelevant trivia for you. Wow. That makes this, this, makes this entire video. <laughs> I, I thought you'd enjoy it. Um, and then there's an S-type again. Like, a, um, like a, I, I think yeah. the S-types were... Only with the larger engines, weren't they? They were sort of 3.4, 3.8. Yeah, yeah. I, I, do you know what? I think I kind of prefer the S-Type if I was buying one. Not that I think it's... I think you get more car for the money because it's not got the name. If you go and buy a Mark II Jag, you're paying Mark II Jag tax. Whereas if you buy an S-Type, you get the, the same car, um, but for a fair degree less money. Don't you get a slightly better suspension in the rear of an S-Type? Do I think you do, don't you? Yeah. Yeah. I, I prefer yeah. the styling of, of the S-Type as well. I mean, towards the end, in about 68, they, Jaguar had like 15 million different saloons that were all competing yeah. with each other. And they all got replaced with one car, which yeah. was pretty good. I mean, they had to do something about it. Um, well, they needed to, didn't they? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, the first time I drove a Mark II, it was um, up, in, up in Yorkshire, like a classic car hire place, and uh, borrowed one. We drove up into the moors to take photos of it. And so driving out of town, I was thinking, God, this thing's so heavy that there's no power steering on it. It was really hard to get maneuver through traffic and the gear shift was good, but it's just everything was heavy. But the moment we got onto the lanes and we could sort of speed up, put my foot down and start getting the car flowing, it was fantastic because it was just, it came alive. It kind of just spoke to you and the steering was really well connected. Without the power steering, you've got a lovely connection with the road, but at low speed, it was very heavy indeed. And the brakes were good on it as well. It's a bit like the um, the E type, really, isn't it? Because that's an absolute yeah, handful yeah. of lower speed and no power steering or anything. I mean, in a Mark II, you could have power steering as an option, I believe. Um, I think which you I could, definitely yeah. would have yeah. had um, if it had been me. Mm. Then, you know, you got to you got to have proper muscles to drive these old cars, haven't you? Without power steering, um, <laughs> yeah, uh, you forget. Yeah, yeah. Um, and again, in the have guns will haggle. Um, there is a sixty-five. Jackie and Mark II, again driven by the villain. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so, uh, definitely the Avengers, the stereotype the is guy's car. you drive yourself yeah. a, you, you drive a Mercedes or a Jaguar if you're a villain, unless you're Michael Latimer and you want if to electrocute attack. people and you have a, you have a Morris Minor yeah. van. Um, but in, yeah, <laughs> it's, it's a 65 bottom BNS. Did he upset someone? Sorry? Did he upset someone on the, in the crew and that's why they gave him a little Morris van instead of a really exciting luxury car? 
<laughs> I, I don't know. Who knows? Who knows? Um, <laughs> so, yeah, BNF 642C, that Mark II and Half Guns will haggle. And in something nasty in the nursery, which is got one of the most bizarre plots ever. It's about trying to get missile secrets out of civil servants by making them believe that they are back with their nanny in the nursery by using a, a, a psychotic drug on a plastic ball that they throw through the window of the house. Okay. That's the plot of the episode. Naturally. Of course. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can see why the event just sticks in people's minds, can't you? It's just yeah, completely yeah. I, out I've there. I've not seen the episode. And yeah. that, that assumes that the only person in the house or the one person who will pick up the ball in the house is the, per the target. I know, yeah, it's completely ludicrous, yeah. isn't it? And, it, the, and they um, left the window open as well. What if it was a slightly cooler day and none of the house windows were open? Well, the they, entire plot well, well, well it, but actually, one, one of them, the, um, the chap at the beginning episode, he's been chased by them, been chased by a man in drag in a wheelchair with a machine gun. Right. Okay. Dresses a nanny. He he, he right. throws the ball through the window to break it. So, unfortunately, your argument doesn't quite stand up because they just chuck oh, it. Through oh, fine. The okay. Yeah. So the <laughs> yeah, but yeah, there's one, there's one bit in it's very nice in the nursery, and I've been to the spot where it's filmed. It's a, at a country house in Radlett. There's the mm. nanny in the in, in the wheelchair with a machine gun firing at Patrick McNee, who has to make a getaway in his Bentley. Of course. <laughs> it, uh, uh, because it's the Avengers. Not surreal you know, at all. It's, it's completely, yeah. completely insane. Um, but one of the characters in Some Nasty Nursery drives a, a 1967 um, Jaguar 420G, which mm. was the facelifted Mark 10. Uh, have you ever seen yeah. one of those? Yeah, they're, they're, they're nice. They're big things, aren't they? You see them in, in, in the flesh or the metal, and they are enormous cars. Yeah, um, I, mean, I do quite like them. Actually. The only thing I, I know about them, other than having seen a couple of shows, is the fact that they were fantastic in banger racing because they were yeah, very, yeah, very that's heavy that's and hard. Most men, yeah. But the last one I, I saw was one I was hoping to shoot for a magazine, but we never quite got the shoot done. It was um, a hot rod one that had been sort of slammed to the ground. So that whole kind of flying saucer look of the thing was made even more so by the fact it was only that far off the ground and the wheel spats were virtually. Scraping the tarmac. I think they're really good looking cars, actually. Yeah. Very, very Thunderbird, you almost in the styling. They're like a. Mm. Yeah, it looks like Thunderbird too, doesn't it? You're quite right. It does, but yeah. Well, any of the cars that were on the ground in any of the um, the Jerry Anderson things it could have lent themselves to have been the, the prototype for it. Yeah, I, I, I think so. Um, let's talk about Ivor Dean, who was um, Inspector. Uh, Spectre Teal in The Saint. Um, he made a guest appearance in Dead Man's Treasure, which is, you know, keep talking about Dead Man's Treasure because it's the episode, really, if you want to talk about Cars of the Avengers. He, has, he, he drives around, mm -hmm. he'd be adjudicator. He plays a butler in the episode who's the adjudicator for the, the car rally. And he drives around in a very, mm -hmm. now a very rare type of Land Rover. It's a 1954 Land Rover 86 inch wheelbase series one. 704 CUT. Have you ever even seen an 86 inch wheelbase Land Rover, sir? Yeah, I'm not sure I have. I've seen a fair few um, Mark 1 well, Series 1 Land Rovers over the years in different sizes. I don't remember if I've seen an 86 inch, though. Yeah, yeah. we're talking old, old, old this one. Though. Yeah, no, I'd I would love a, a Series 1 Land Rover. Um, but they, they are insanely expensive now, aren't they? Just they're, they're basically a tractor with a well, a tractor with side by side seats, effectively. Um, but I think Harry Metcalf's got one, hasn't he? Who? Oh, sorry, Harry Metcalf's got a series one, hasn't he? Harry Metcalf. Yeah, from Harry's Garage. Uh, um, yeah, I think he has. Yeah, yeah. Wouldn't wouldn't surprise me if he had. Um, now it's one of the things. If I ever win the lottery, that's on the list of cars I will go and go and get hold of. Uh, the yeah. Land Rover in its purest form. Yes, but um, if you want the lottery, would this next car be on your list? A 1929 Lincoln Model L three window town sedan by Willoughby. Funny you should say that, yeah. Because <laughs> <laughs> you like American cars, don't you, sir? I do, and I like 30s cars as well. This is 1929. Um, 
it's not something I've really come across before. Uh, yeah, I must have a picture of it right now for reference. I don't know where they got this. I mean, it's a, it's a right hand drive British registered uh, car, um, T7855, driven the episode by an actor called Leslie mm. French. Um, it, it's got like an elephant or something as, as the, uh, um, the, what's it called? The, the mascot on is a little elephant mm. on the top. I mean, I must admit, it just, it just looked like an old car. I didn't even know until having done research on it, because I've seen that episode millions of times over the last 25 years. Mm. Um, I didn't know what it was at all. Um, we'll get into well, were a lot. A lot of American brands did used to import to the UK, and they built right-hand drive cars in mostly in Canada. Like the McLaughlin factory built Buicks and things. Um, and there was a couple of, I think, there was one main sales agent in London who dealt with all the the brands. And so it wasn't that uncommon up until about the 1950s, really, to buy an American car in in Britain. Um, and they were building in right-hand drive specifically for us. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they would also bought the same cars to like Australia and Hong Kong and places like that. I know, I know that in um, Randall Hawker Deceased and also in um, Department S, there's a 1966 Ford Galaxy 500, but it's a Canadian built mm. right-hand drive car. Um, but this is like way earlier than that. But yeah, it's, it's oh, an yeah. interesting car yeah. to put in. I mean, somebody who, I, I imagine this is Brian Clemens again, just like making it look weird because just for the sake of looking mm, it Because it's good. Yeah. yeah. Um, <laughs> another car that is, is interesting that might be on your list a 1966 mm. Mercedes-Benz 230 SL, um, mission highly improbable, uh, driven by <laughs> Captain Scarlet himself, Francis Matthews. Uh, oh, wow. <laughs> K75D, mission highly improbable. The, the plot is really silly. It, it's about a, a um, Russian plot to steal a type of tank and it's um they got a, a it's actually a real a real military vehicle it's an it's an it's an mm. Alvis saracen um fe603 that's a real type of military vehicle mm. but the way they do it yeah. is they persuade a british scientist who's invented a shrinking ray to <laughs> steal to to use a shrinking ray to steal the tank for them and Francis cool. Matthews, yeah. once he's stolen the shrinking ray, and he's, uh, he's a double agent, he's working for the other side, he drives out of the base in his Mercedes with a, a raincoat on and the, the tank's inside his pocket. <laughs> um... Brilliant. <laughs> Wouldn't it be easy to just steal the tank and then steal the shrinking ray? <laughs> um... I don't know. As long as you start on a tank, you can go anywhere. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's silly. Oh, no. Um, uh, but yeah, anyway. Uh, the Merc, uh, though, the Merc's beautiful. The Merc's a wonderful car. I love one of those. I'm, very hard to get a manual one, though. Most of them are automatic, if I remember rightly. Um, yeah, I don't, very I don't pretty know. Car. What's really weird about... Early adopter. Sorry? Uh, early adopter of the, um, the Bosch um, K-Jectronic fuel injection on those engines. Oh... The k jetronic fuel injection system. Yeah. The pain of your life, sir. It is, yes. Well, it works fine on the Volvo, but not on the Mercedes. <laughs> the funny thing about the Pagoda Roof Mercedes is that they changed the engine in it twice. We didn't keep mm. the models in production parallel. They literally just mm. changed the engine and changed the derivative. Oh. I think there was a 250 and a 280 yeah. as well, from, from memory. It was a 280, yeah. Six cylinder in it, yeah. Yeah, so I think this is a 230, so this is an early one. Very yeah. nice car. I mean, again, ridiculously cool. expensive yeah. when new. I don't know how... Oh, no, yeah. uh, Francis Matthews' character is just this scientist. Uh, he, he's he's it's assisting the chap who read of a shrink ray. How on earth he got his hands on one of these Mercedes? Obviously, uh, you know, he's been um, <laughs> paid by the Russians. His double agent. Yeah, yeah, so that, clearly he's got money. He's not, that's not from his government salary, is it? No, that that would be is is a uh, KGB handlers hand funding that one, I think. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so I think a bit more modest, going back to the second series of mm. the Avengers, which is with um, on a Blackman. So we're talking 1962 now, and we're talking videotape mm. and um, no budget whatsoever, uh, which is a bit different from the later bits. <laughs> There's a 1957 Morris Minor Traveller, an episode called Traitor in Zebra, when they were still 
making the series at Teddington uh, and just down the road of Teddington is a mm. place called Western Green. I've actually, I've actually um, been there and a friend of mine actually reenacted the sequence because the chap gets strangled inside his um, Boris Meyer Traveller when we, we, we reenacted the sequence and oh, right. took a photograph. Um, uh, <laughs> so this is a, a, a 57 Traveller. It's still got, I can't remember why wipers go mm. like this or like, or like this in that one. I can't, I can't remember. Oh, okay. They changed the over at some point. Uh, looking at the photo, I think they the outer edge type wipers. Yeah, so, they're those uh, ones. Big old triangle. Yeah. Have you ever driven a traveller, sir? Uh, yes, I've driven, I've driven quite a few Morris miners of various descriptions. I really like them. Um, the whole idea of a wooden car is ridiculous. Um, even that late in the day. In the early cars, it made sense because wood wasn't easy to work with cheap, affordable material. But by the sort of 1950s, it was crazy building a wooden car but they are rather pretty and um i think i was going to get a traveler it would need to be engine swapped for something stupid just be, to, to really hammer home the ridiculousness of a wooden car so that's, that's then stupidly powerful i or mean very modern in some way maybe electric the classic modification back in the day was to put a fiat twin cam engine with a type 9 sierra yeah. gearbox in them because they just spit yeah. right away obviously both the type 9 sierra gearbox and the fiat twin cam engine <laughs> are now rarer <laughs> than the Morris Miners themselves. Yeah, it's ridiculous to try and get on. Yeah, no, I think a Tesla conversion would be quite good. Four-wheel drive Tesla conversion would be ideal. Yeah, yeah. Um, now we move on to another Morris. If you remember, mm. um, if you're Furious Driving channel viewers, you actually see this in an episode of Furious Driving. I'm not going to tell you which one it is, but there is a What's T-shirt all? which yeah. has purr on it. And... Um, this is because it's from an episode called The Hidden Tiger, and the blue on the T-shirt and the logo are taken from this van, a 1962 Morris LD um, M um, 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 30. The Hidden Tiger, again, a completely ludicrous episode about um, someone trying to take over um, the, the country called Dr. Manx using, um, a, 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 using the resources of a, a chap who's a bit crazy played by Ronnie Barker, uh, to, to brainwash the cats of the country into attacking their owners. Uh-huh. <laughs> <laughs> and this is the van that, um, that, that was the okay. blue, of a blue T-shirt, which he wore in the unspecified episode yeah. of Who Is Driving. Yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Was so, it one of your cars I was driving by? Cars? No, no, well, no, no, actually it wasn't. No, no, no. <laughs> yeah, for late book reviews of that one. Um, next we move on yeah. to the Morris Oxford Traveller Series 6, which is in Never Never Say Die. Mm -hmm. um, guest, guest starring Christopher Lee, but driven by um, Christopher Benjamin. If you know who he is, you might know who he is, I don't know. Um, he used to play an eccentric character in loads of old TV series. Um, Mm. BMC, I think, supplied this this car. Um, HOA 994D, a nice, lovely two-tone um, Oxford Traveller. Um, the main difference between the this and the Austin Cambridge was actually the front the front end, where the the Morris grill is really plain in comparison to the Austin one, isn't it? Really plain looking. I was about to say that. Yeah, really, really, yeah. It's just just horizontal slats and no points of interest whatsoever and it's a plain flat bumper uh, yeah there's virtually nothing to say about it at all it's, you can see it's the same wings and the same bonnet but no it's, it's yeah really really plain but it is an estate car which is an astonishingly rare I, th I don't think I've ever seen um an Oxford Traveller in, yeah. in real life yeah yeah the funny thing about about these is that at the time Austin and Morris were totally separate dealerships can you imagine that mm. They were they were competing yeah, against the themselves. Of running that, yeah. yeah, 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 exactly. Um, it was I, I don't know why. It, it just stupid. Um, it just but, in, rivalries had never been addressed since they became one company. They just soldiered on as internal rivals. Yeah, but it all went wrong again, didn't it? It's just a, it's a, it's a well, yeah, yeah. So never never say die. <laughs> the the car is actually used quite prominently because it's the car that's that's used to knock over Christopher Lee twice mm -hmm. or rather his stunt oh, okay. double um he gets not over yeah. twice by it and he's under some kind of gosh you 
how do I put this? It's a bit like Robocop because mm. he's caught, there's a, like a plastic duplicate and metal duplicate of Christopher Lee Mage to go and attack people. Oh, and okay. He's controlled by radio control. Of course, yeah. Yeah, it's the Avengers, Absolutely. you know, it's just <laughs> it's the way it happens. Yeah. Um, another mini moat pickup, um, which is used in Hidden Tiger, it's, a, it's actually a milk float. Second, second, could you believe that? The Avengers, yeah. and, I mean, it's talking about milk floats again. Milk floats and moats, but this is, I think that if this is the one where they've got the, something in the milk, this will put an end to that plot as, again as well, because the chances of any bottles arriving unbroken in the back of a moat is zero. <laughs> yeah, well, apparently there's like four, four or five of these, and um, this particular one, I'll just, I'll just pick one LYP 792D, there was LYP 793 and four. The four is mm. used in an episode called All Done With Mirrors, um, which was filmed in Devon with Linda Forsen. Three, apparently, is still around. And the owner claims oh. that's one of the mokes from the prisoner. I don't know, because this is January 67, when the prisoner was still being made, actually, in January 67. So I, I don't really know. And it was painted white as well. All the mokes in the prisoner are white. So mm. who knows? Um, but yeah, the, in, the, in the episode, they're used to deliver milk to Per, the philanthropic, um, mm. philanthropic union for the rest recuperation and restitution of cats. That's it. Um, that's what Per stands for because okay. this is the Avengers. <laughs> um, right. Again, a, a yeah. stupid episode title. Um, look, stop me if you've heard this one, but there, there are these two fellas, <laughs> which is about. <laughs> some cl literally some clowns going around killing people that's what the episode's about and it guest stars john cleese as well, an expert on clown makeup uh, okay fair enough <laughs> uh, yeah but the, why, why wouldn't it why the, wouldn't it the funny thing about that is that the car that we're talking about is possibly the most ordinary car in Britain in yeah, the 60s, the it's, it's, like, it's an ADO 16, um, otherwise known as the 1100 yeah. and 1300. This is a Morris version, um, KPD mm -hmm. um, 655C. But the one you drove, the ADO 16, was a lot nicer, wasn't it, than this one? Uh, I think it was, yeah. yeah. It was the um, Wolsey, wasn't it? It was, yes. And I got told for saying, told for saying Wolsey too quickly because I didn't say the second L clearly enough. Um, yeah, that is much more more posher than this. Um, but yeah, ultimately the same car. It's, it seems bizarre that today when they badge engineer things and things like the Volkswagen Group and you've got everything from a, a Skoda to an Audi all in the same body shell, but they massively changed the interiors to make it feel different and change, you know. In this case, it was different hubcaps and the wood on the dashboard was basically it. Um, and if you bought a Riley, you got a rev counter. That's it, yeah, yeah, and you're paying I don't know how much extra for that. Oh, you, the, actually, the Riley and the Wolseley got twin carbs, didn't they? So they were actually a bit quicker. Yeah, but the Riley, I think, was the, the fastest of all. And you bought a Wolseley, yeah. of course, you've got a little badge lit up on the front. Well, yeah, who wouldn't want that? <laughs> yeah, exactly. I wish that was still a thing on everything. The problem with, with this ep episode, though, is that, that this is the Morris, and so this mm. is the plainest one of all. You didn't even get your wavy grill. Course, yeah. No, you got nothing, did you? This is your, I can't afford a car, but I'm going to buy one anyway car. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, and, and they were the most common car in Britain in the 60s. I mean, it was a best-selling car, mm. I think, for years, in, for some reason. Um, yeah, they were. Yeah, yeah. They were a good car. They, they handled well, and there were loads of space in them. And if, in terms of a car, they were very good indeed. So you can't really knock them from that point of view. No, no, indeed. But Not that interesting, though. You what would, what about a Porsche 912, sir? Another poverty spec car. Well, yeah, they were much maligned. They're, they're very nice, actually. I think possibly the better buy for a long time because they didn't have the 911 tax on them, so you could actually afford to buy a 912 for quite a long time until everyone realised that, and then they got expensive. Because um, the 912, that had the shorter wheelbase, didn't it? Um, like the early 911s. So you've got the original classic yeah. look. Um, I think also it's, it's only a four-cylinder engine rather than a six. Was it a 1.6 engine out of the 356C or something? Some, yeah, I think it was a 356 engine. Uh, it was it a four-cylinder or a smaller capacity, but certainly it was a smaller engine. And so you didn't have such wayward handling as you did. Because when the 911 came out, it was a bit too powerful for that short wheelbase. 
um, and then when the 912 was around, it wasn't quite as powerful, so you got to enjoy that chassis a bit more with lower power. Yeah, yeah, abs absolutely. Yeah. Um, well, we, the internet connection's going a bit funny. Let's hopefully it'll last a little bit longer because we haven't got yeah, much far to go now. So the 912 in this case no. is a, it's a 1965 model. It's using Legacy of Death. It's a, it's on false plates, unfortunately, which I, do, I don't particularly like, but mm. just the way that things go. <laughs> and it's a sort of green color. I used to think the years, I mean, watch this, this, um, episode but it was black but it's actually dark green um it's dark green i think yeah. we were actually no <laughs> yes dark 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 green um the, um, the but the thing is watching a lot of these older series um at the at the time the quality that you'd see it in would be either from a vhs tape or you'd just be catching it on on channel four or something and so it would be um, mm -hmm. It would be much, much worse quality than actually it is. And that, these days you've got DVDs and Blu-rays and it makes these series yeah, look really, yeah. really good. You see all, all the details coming out at last. Yes, exactly. Um, how about a 1967 Reliant Scimitar SE4A, sir? Uh, Scimitar SE4A? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, I like the SE4. They're, they're pretty good. They've got a Ford engine, haven't they, in those? S6 V6. You're absolutely right. Yeah. Yeah. You've given one of those? I have, yeah. A white one, actually. Um, nice engine. Um, they feel a bit kit car like. I'm going to upset the Scimitar owners group here. Because <laughs> um, you, can, you can sort of feel the, the plasticness in the body when you sort of shut the doors and that kind of thing. But they, uh, they are nice handling cars. They're very much very good, sporty vehicles from that Back point of view. Downstairs. In a minute, Reed. In a minute. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, yeah, so th this particular one, ARF 956D, um, has a 66 plate, but a 67 model. This one mm. was um, supplied by Reliant themselves, which is a bit weird again. I don't know oh, why they have all these weird cars, but somebody wanted them. So, yeah, and Barry M, if you've heard of him, he drives that car and you've just been murdered, which is another weird plot. It's about a, um, it's about a blackmail plot by George Massale again another very popular actor of the 60s mm. who um, pretends to assassinate people and then leaves them the card saying, you've just been murdered. I mean, if, you, um, if, if it happens to you four times, it'll actually kill you. Um, that's, that's what happens. Oh. <laughs> just that's just what, what goes that. on. Right, we will speed things up, sir, because your son is clearly um, wanting, to, wanting to do things. He's um, bored now. Yes. Yeah. So we, 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 um, we talked about the Rolls-Royce Silver Cloud um, with the special body on it earlier on in the yeah. beer merchants and i think two episodes as well probably last year in the nursery which i improbable there's a rolls royce silver cloud series three it's a 65 model it's a I, white one are you jumping there is that model <laughs> uh, did they actually jump that yes they jumped it that's a road near pirate <laughs> studios this is this is this, oh, is, right, what, this okay. is what i'm saying the the whole point of it happening is that the fear merchants is an episode about well, uh, identifying a, a fear that someone has and um if somebody mm. if somebody gets frightened by something then you know they then get have to go into the uh, mental hospital and this particular chap mm -hmm. andrew keir who's another actor from the 60s he gets his chauffeur gets um disposed of and he gets a new chauffeur um garfield morgan again and he drives <laughs> with rob the silver cloud so fast but he jumps over the bridge and i think he's supposed to go about 100 miles an hour <laughs> So, is a silver cloud wow. slow? Well, maybe not. Well, well, I think it's got a decent top end. Let's take a while to get there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Exactly. <laughs> Run up to um, do that. And I'm not sure I want to buy it after, as a second-hand car after it landed. <laughs> Amazingly, that, that, that appeared in two other, other episodes as well, so it clearly could take it. Um, but yeah, oh, okay. CK, CKP 500C. Um, in the interior shots of the studio, though, they actually use a Phantom 5, I think, which has doors opening kind of like mm. this and not like, not like that, if that makes sense. Oh, OK. <laughs> um, but, but, but actually, we've, we've got, we've, this, this is the bit that you've been really looking forward to, sir. Let's talk about Rover P6. Exactly, yes. Particularly one Rover P6. Oh, wonderful. Three different episodes. Did you hit yourself? Oh, the I've lost your sound. I've lost your. 
Big signal, can you hear me? Yeah, I hear you. Oh, okay, I'll hear you back again. Okay, yeah, I can hear you. Um, this, uh, this is a very early 2000. Um, it's a pre faceless one, isn't it? Um, have you ever driven a very early one? I make it limp. I've been in a few of them, yeah. That's, that's like got the, the shark's tooth grill on, on the valance as well, that one. Yeah, uh, so it's JLL 376D. I think it must be known by some of the production mm. crew because it's in Positive Negative Man, Forget Me Not and Homicide and Old Lace. Um, and um, yeah, it, it's, it's, um, it's a nice colour as well, actually, that. It is, isn't it? Yeah. I've forgotten the name. I was about to say the name, but just slipped off my face. Off your face and then onto your shirt, eventually dribbling down onto your legs. Shush, you. Onto the. You haven't got too many to go now, to go now, Ray. You haven't got, I haven't got too many to go now. <laughs> <laughs> On the yes. ground. Well, as you know, one of my all time favourite cars and a wonderful piece of design and engineering, uh, properly designed by engineers to, to do a task regardless of the cost of, of doing it. Uh, brilliant vehicles. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I mean, you've uh, if you only ever owned two. I know you've still got two. I've only owned two, but I've been in an awful lot of them through magazine shoots and friends' cars and, and that kind of yeah. thing. Yeah, um, we're we're gonna have to speed things up a little bit. We're gonna go on to some roots cars now. Um, okay. Ninety sixty four Sigur Vogue Series Three Estate. Um, mm -hmm. Now you drove a super minx, didn't you? It's very similar to this. I did, yeah, the tail end looks very similar. It's interesting how the, the estate styling kind of fits in between those kind of upright fins, but at the same time, it still manages to look a little bit awkward. So. Yeah, yeah the, the Vogue was um, a bit more luxurious. Obviously, there was a Humber version as well. I think it was called yeah, the Scepter, right, yeah. if I remember correctly. I always get that's a right, between the Singer Gazelle and the Singer Vogue. I don't know why. Uh, but this one's a Coventry <laughs> wide car, CDU 922B <laughs> Series 3. Uh, let's talk about Sunbeam Alpines quickly. Um, yeah. In the sellout, which is another really old episode. I mean, your screenshot you've got there is really indistinct and terrible. Uh, black and white. So we're talking um, very, very early episode. Yeah. Um, I think June 62. Um, Sunbeam Alpines Series 2. So a similar range to the one Dr. No. I can't remember if that's a, a one or two at mm. the moment. Um, but this is a factory supplied car. Uh, two, three, two, three, eight. Yeah, it's wire wheels as well. Yeah, wire wheels. Yeah. And then Nigel Davenport again, um, who plays um, a, a major in the Danger Makers, a 1966 mm -hmm. Alpine Series 5. Again, mm -hmm. by Roots FHP 330C. Um, the last, I think the last model, because I think they stopped making them in 67, as far as I can remember. They went on to the arrow shape Alpine, which was a Mm. Um, what was the, 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 the Sunbeam Alpine and then there was another type of coupe that I've forgotten the name of now you'd have to remind oh, me right. yes. so the, the, the arrow type rapier and alpine um, mm. have you ever driven one of these um, convertible alpines sir? Yeah, I don't think I have actually no I think I've, I've seen a fair few of them in, in, the, in the metal but I've never actually been in one bizarrely and very good looking cars and of course there was a V8 one as well wasn't there the um, Sunbeam Tiger which is the same car but with a ridiculous, um, is it a Ford V8 or a it's Chevy Ford, V8? Yeah. Yeah, Ford, they had to stop it? making the Tiger because obviously by 1967, um, Roots had been bought by Chrysler and they didn't really want it, yeah. Ford engine in their product. So <laughs> Ford engine in a Chrysler car. <laughs> I know, I know, it's silly, isn't it? Um, but that's what happens, isn't it? Yeah. Um, what, how much do you know about Triumph 2000, sir? I think they're great cars. Bizarrely, they came out within months or weeks even of the Rover 2000, its biggest rival. And it's incredible to think that two rival companies were thinking so clearly on the same lines. And it's interesting how the, um, the Rover was purely British designed, whereas they went and got an Italian designer for the, um, for the Triumph. Um, I think you, people always say that the 2000 yeah. has got a smoother engine with a v straight six in it. Do you prefer the um, Innsbruck type 2000 or do you prefer the pre facelift like this one? I think I prefer the pre facelift. This, that, that kind of nice smooth nose on it looks really good. It kind of looks like how it was intended to look. Yeah. I still like the other one. Um, I, I prefer this one. Yeah, yeah. So in, in, in the Avengers, there's actually two of them. Um, there is a mm. 2000 automatic and Requiem. 
um, from 65 MBH 545C, and then they keep killing Steve's, which is mm. the episode of Ian Ogilvy and that Mercedes. This is the car that mm. Patrick McNee actually chases Ian Ogilvy and his Mercedes in. He is not, <laughs> doesn't drive a Rolls oh, okay, Royce, yeah. he drives this. He steals it from um, a conference, and they have Chase and Vernon Beaches, and you get the tail out <laughs> of dust and all kinds of things. It's very exciting. And for some yeah, reason, yeah. I've always wanted a pre-facelift Triumph 2000 for that reason alone. Mm. And the colour on this one, which is a DHM 243D, the, the, the later the blue one, um, that mm. is beautiful, that colour. Um, I don't know why. Yeah, isn't it? Well, I, lo I love it. It does. They look good in, in this colour, blue or in white. Also really looks good on these, these shaped cars. Can I show you this yeah, it does. Um, so, oh, look, oh, look, 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 look at that weird... Glitch. Can you yeah, see it? Yeah, I can. It's just can shimmering. You... No, 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 like the um, like the bit of the mouth is just going down. It's oh, so yeah. strange. We've only got we've only got four, four or five more cars now, Reed. Did you, you, really you done, really. Hold really on a little bit longer. Give, give us five minutes to be done. Dad, we get some tea then. You can do my um. Tell me in a moment. Haircut <laughs> for five pounds. I don't want to pay. I don't want to pay to your haircut. You just need a haircut. Then there's no deal, Dad. <laughs> Right, just hold on, hold on a bit more, Reid. <laughs> okay. uh, sorry about that, viewers. We, we, we're coming to the end now. Um, there. In, in Mission Highly Improbable, there is a 1966 mm -hmm. Triumph TR4A, um, which is driven by an actress called mm -hmm. Jane Merrow. She was a bit, a bit of a something in the 60s. That's KGN 444D. Um, and now we're getting on to another... This is probably the last car on this list you've driven. Um, a 1966 Vanden 4-litre R, there's actually two of these used mm. in the Avengers. Again, I think BMC supplied them in Who's Who, um, HOF 302D, and then in, in Murdersville, HOF 800D. Um, now, you drove, was it a 1961 um, abandoned plaid printer? Uh, three litres or whatever. Yeah, I think it might have been a, yeah. Well, the thing I, I, did, the, I did the research on, because I knew the one thing, I could get anything else wrong on that car at all, but I had to get the name right. And I spent longer research in the pronunciation than anything else and because it's a Flemish name it's actually pronounced Vanden Plas which is kind of ex exaggerating a little bit but you say the s on the end it's not a silent s um, and a lot of people came and said yes thank you for getting it right and some people said, well the BMC and BL dealers didn't say, they said Pla back in the 70s but no the BL people got it wrong some bloke in marketing said Pla once because they thought it sounded posh and it's actually a, a, an audible s on the end of the name it's like the Ford car, which oh, Ford yeah. have said. Ford have always said they said K A car and car. Yeah, they've never defined it, have they? No, Ford have used all three, so you can say what you want. Yeah. I think Vanden Pla, as far as I'm concerned, I'm just going to say that because I just am. Well, it it was a Flemish. I think it was Flemish. Um, That's right, Flemish Dutch. And um, yes, so that, that plus with a, an, an audible S is the correct pronunciation from its homeland. And then when it moved to London as a uh, subsidiary company, it was still owned by, by them. So it would have still had they, that same pronunciation until BL bought it and then BL Marketing thought they were being retained to that. Um, but... my dad. <laughs> <laughs> so but this particular car, by... the, the, the later ones had this ridiculous... Rolls Royce engine for no reason because the Rolls Royce engine right, yeah. wasn't very smooth, could. not very smooth and not very powerful. They should have just kept no, the very first in, in the one you drove. Yeah, there's a nice engine in that one, which is yeah, the, the um, in the six cylinders, nice and smooth. It's a really good engine, nice and powerful. It was interesting that because of the one I drove, it was just a few months too old to have the picnic tables in the back, which is the one thing no. everyone was expecting it to have. Yeah, because um, I brought those in as standards just a little time just a, literally weeks after this car was built and it became a standard thing to have the picnic tables but that, i think partly because of the allegro um, version of it everyone remembers those those tables yeah because the one you drove was there were, i think there were like four series of these and yours mm. was on them on the on the sort of change but it was a car that had clearly been built and then stuck at a dealer and not registered for some time quite likely yeah yeah it looked that way yeah, yeah. Um, so we'll now move on to the Winchester Cab, used in Noon Doomsday. Um, have you ever never seen heard a Winchester Cab? I've never even heard of it until now. Have so. you never heard of it? No. Mr Richardson, it's... I've actually 
bought you a car that you've never heard of. It looks like a ridiculous homemade thing, looking at the photo. Well, it, the thing about the Winchester cab and the reason why film companies sometimes used these yeah, for filming as opposed to um, the FX4s at the time was because they were a petrol, not a, not a diesel. That was the reason why they're a bit quieter. Oh, uh, okay, yeah. Yeah. So the film inside it, never see it from the outside, though. But yeah, that's, that, that's it. Um, let's now go on to the last two cars we're going we're gonna to be looking at. Um, mm. And um, you're suddenly very pleased to know that we've only got two left. Yes. One is uh, a Wolseley <laughs> 6110 in the episode Murdersville, a uh, 62 mm. model, 649 CLC. I've actually used a shot in this from Man in the Suitcase because it's the same car. It's mm. just the shots in the episode don't look very good. That's a shot. Um, that's basically <laughs> the... Was it also a police car in the episode? Yeah, yeah. The, the, this is the mm. classic police car from the 60s. Yeah. In all these series. Um, mm. Sort of large, basically lost in Westminster, but a Wolseley badged one. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, if you saw that little central light coming from the in the behind you, you knew you're in trouble. Yeah, the little bell as well. Nice. Yeah. <laughs> no, they're great cars, aren't they? They're really solid. They're quick for the day. No, I like those. I like those a lot. I don't I know why, but they, they, they chose Wolseley's and not like, you know, MG or Riley, because you would have thought the MG or Riley would have yeah, might have yeah. been a bit quicker for catching the criminals, but um, I don't know. The same engine. Maybe it's got a good deal from the uh, Wolsey marketing people. Yeah. Because they were used for years, weren't they? And then the last car we're going to talk were, about, yeah. another Land Crab, mm. um, an 1885 Mark One automatic. Again, in You'll Catch Your Death. Which, done now. Again, it seems quite um, pr appropriate, really, because it's about people catching a virus. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> whoever, thought, whoever thought that this, this discussion was going to be yeah. topical, but there we go. Um, well, yeah. yeah an also, Avengers. <laughs> yeah, it would be an automatic, which is a plot point because in the episode, the chap um, opens an envelope inside the car. And because it's an automatic, he just presses the accelerator and fake crashes oh, and something. Up. Again, mm. again, MOK 988F. I think that's supplied by British Rail and BMC. So I doubt they wrote mm. it off. Um, they just made it no. look like it did. <laughs> yeah, cardboard boxes. <laughs> cardboard boxes of Sweeney. Right, sir. Well, I think we've reached the end. Yeah, isn't it? I don't know how yeah. we've. I don't know how we've managed to um, to do this. I think well, I'm going to have to split this up into a couple of parts. But um, thank you long, indeed to Mr. Yeah. Richardson for doing this. I hope my recording's held up. It's, it looks like it has. Oh, fingers crossed, yeah. Um, yeah do it three times. <laughs> please visit the Furious crossed. Driving YouTube channel. Please buy your Furious Driving t-shirt, the Furious Driving yeah. mug. Um, I'll put the links to the appropriate <laughs> videos <laughs> from Furious <laughs> Driving. Yes, the t-shirts. Uh, thank you, Reid, for, 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 for being a beautiful <laughs> assistant here. Um, the, the Volvo <laughs> sketches as well. Um, as, as I've said, a bit, there's, like loads of, there's loads of cars that like um, the man has yes. uh, reviewed, um, <laughs> um, which we'll put a link to in the description below. Um, mm, but don't, don't forget to subscribe to Lodo Consulting as well. Um, this is like the 43rd episode of Cars on Television and Film. Um, there's absolutely loads of these. Wow. And um, okay. if you haven't watched part one already, I'll put a link to that in the description below. Um, Thank you ever so much indeed, once again, for watching. And um, Matt, do you have any closing words for us? Um, no. <laughs> okay, well, we made, all I can say is so. We Thank made you, it. Good night. We finally Thank made you. it. If you made it, well done. <laughs> okay, stop recording.